All right, here we've got uh, Clock Tower Rewind. Playing play on the Nintendo Switch, courtesy of the developer and publisher uh, Way Forward. I want to thank them very much for the opportunity. It's also co developed uh, by Limited Run Games and Human Entertainment. Uh, I believe Human Entertainment was the original uh, developer um, back when I was on the Super Famicom. This is the first time we're getting it on modern platforms. In fact, I think really the first time we're getting it officially outside of Japan. So this one here has uh, extras. So we've got uh, end credits. We get the intro scene. We got motion comics, which is kind of cool. Uh, you got the uh, uh, Hif uh, Hifumi Kono interview, image gallery, how to play, uh, commercial sample demo, which is kind of cool, and licenses. And the music player, you can play any of the music from the game, which is pretty cool. Uh, start a game. Uh, you can play the rewind version. Uh, plays with enhanced uh, version featuring quality of life updates and content restored from the first fair edition of Clock Tower or the original, uh, which was released, I think, on Super Famicom. It may have been released on other platforms, but I know definitively it was released on Super Famicom uh, in Japan. I'm going to go into the rewind version with the start game. And we'll do continues is right at the very beginning. So here it tells you how to play. So it's a point and click adventure game for those who don't know. Uh, a little bit of a survival horror mixed in there for good measure. So you play as uh, a girl that um, is part of uh, the is a group of girls that were uh, adopted uh, from this orphanage and placed this mansion. And you always have to look for clues, figure out like why you were adopted and and just what's going on in, in the mansion, um, all while trying to avoid being. Uh, killed by uh, a stalker character that stalks you with a big giant pair of shears. It's locked. Okay, so we're going to go back up here. So again, this is a point-and-click style game. Uh, you can use the uh, L and R buttons. Why is it keep going over there? Can you not do that? There we go. Okay, I should not do that. Okay, but you use the uh, the LR buttons to click. You can also use the uh, the uh, face buttons as well. Which can I go up the stairs? Come on. Nope. Oh, maybe you just can't go up the stairs yet. I figured. Okay, yeah, so I have to visit the people over here for it first. But uh, but I like the graphics. The graphics are, are cool. I mean, for a Super Famicom game, it's not bad. Um, what I think is really cool about this version, though, is you can uh, come to uh, the ops, the pause menu here and adjust the uh, screen resolution. So you want to have it stretched, you can, though it looks horrible. <laughs> You've also got uh, filter options, CRT, on or off. I got borders. Um, you got a couple different border options here. Um, or you have no border. I prefer this border, honestly. Back to the game. And you can save at any point, which is nice. Uh, now, when you do save, I'm going to save right now, actually. Okay, so when I initially saved, what happened was I actually paused the game. I thought it froze. It didn't. I was just being silly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk with this boy here. Okay, that might be a girl, actually. Uh, okay, I said that might be a boy. Well, okay. The voice they used, though, for that character in the, in the uh, prologue motion... Uh, comic prologue, sounded female. Talk to her now. The only nitpicky thing I have with this game is they didn't make the character run or like walk any faster. Um, this game is very, very slow. Um, everything about the game is slow. <laughs> um... From the way that the characters move to the dialogue, it's just, it's a very slow game. It is, 
a slow point-and-click adventure horror game with, well, point-and-click adventure with horror elements. So I wish they, were, well, they would make it more modern in the sense that your character would move faster. Um, it just, it feels like she's moving extremely slow, like almost like too slow. Um, another thing I wish that they would have implemented would have been the right analog stick to allow you to um, look ahead of where the character is. Um, but instead, it does nothing. So I think really the only modern improvements they made were like back-end improvements. Uh, this is from the sounds of it. Or from the looks of it, rather. But the music's great. The music is wonderful. Uh, the point-and-click adventure style of, of this game is okay. It just feels dated. Um, I, I've played other point-and-clicks, and they just play a lot better than this one. Um, but uh, this isn't bad. Uh, for us getting it for the first time in the States, it's a great release. I love the fact that it's here, available for everybody to, to enjoy modern platforms. I just wish that it would have gotten a lot more quality improvements and to make it more modernized. It just feels like a slow, mucky, moving mess. Um, but uh, but it's it's kind of, it's kind of decent. It's kind of decent story. The story is good. Uh, just the gameplay just feels. It feels dated. It feels slow. It just feels sluggish, but. Again, outside of how slow the game is, the game looks really good. Um, I, I love... If it wasn't for the game being as slow as it is, I would say it's a, it's a great game that you need to check out. But understand that given this is a Super Famicom game, given that doesn't have a whole a whole lot in the way of, of quality of life as in terms of the way it plays. It does have other elements that do make it worth picking up if you want to pick up uh, Clock Tower Rewind. Uh, it's got some great uh, music. It's got uh, great uh, voice acting for the elements that have voice acting in them. Uh, great animation. If the character would just move a little bit faster, I would think I would say it's a phenomenal game. It's a good game. There are better point-click adventure games out there, um, but uh, this game's okay. This game, I mean, this game is one of the the first uh, survival horror games, and for that, it, it deserves a lot of praise. It's it's a good game. It it gave us a lot of really cool games became after it. But, again, with this being the first release outside of Japan, at least official release, um, and given the improvements that it got, you would think that would have gotten um, <laughs> a little bit more than what we got here. Um, don't get me wrong, what we have here is great. It just could be better. But uh, I do want to thank Way Forward for the opportunity. Uh, Clock Tower Rewind is a great release. Um, definitely stays true to its roots with some modern flair, if you will. I just wish it was more modernized um, and less stuck in the past. Um, I'm going to interview here, though. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, until next time, take care and happy gaming.